Um, this is just another uh, Loom video that I'm just putting together. Uh, I'm not going to give away what it is about just yet um, until obviously I send out the PowerPoint um, because I'd like to start with this uh, straightforward starter activity which hopefully you can see in front of you which says how would you order or organize these fruit and vegetables so before you know, we dive straight into it I just want to give you a moment to uh, to think about that so if you look at the vegetables what do you think is the main kind of uh, thing that strikes you what is the main thing that uh, uh, straight away you think you could uh, use as a way to order and organize the fruit and veg okay so hopefully um, you have had a bit of a think about it you know, you, at this point you can pause the video and have a, a ponder for a minute and then come back onto it but the main focus of uh, this lesson this loom video is going to be about color so just bear with me can I click on the point? there we go so colors okay so it's quite a straightforward one um, today that I'd like you to focus on when, when it comes to color. I'm not going to get you to uh, use any kind of fancy programs like Pixlr or, or Canva or anything like that. Um, the focus is going to be on you actually creating like a color wheel. You are going to have to use a website which is called the Coolers Generator website and it's all about creating like a color wheel. But we'll get onto that in a bit. Okay, so uh, where does this fit in? Well, this particular task creating a color wheel fits into component two, learning aim A and learning aim B, which as I've said before, because obviously we find ourselves in the middle of this lockdown, um, if you're a year 10 watching this video, we've already done component two, learning aim B and C, uh, and we just have to go back onto learning aim A and just mop up a few kind of experimental tasks. If you're in year nine, you'll know that we have completed component one, learning aim A and B, and so um, you know, luck would have it that both year 9 and year 10 kind of find themselves at kind of uh, the same place. Okay, So it's, it's quite helpful for me at the moment to obviously send this out to both year groups. So it's quite, uh, you know, quite advantageous. So you're going to be developing media production skills and techniques and applying these media production skills and techniques. I'm going to talk to you uh, today a little bit about the psychology and science behind colours and how Colours have connotations and deeper meanings attached to them, which uh, you know about already. So the idea that red is an interesting colour to start with because red can symbolise uh, lots of different things. It can symbolise love and romance, especially if you think about how it's used in rom-coms and used on Valentine's Day um, and, uh, and used in the context of kind of love and passion. However, if you change the context of that a little bit and you apply the colour red to like say a horror movie and apply it to that genre of film then straight away the connotations and the meaning of red becomes much more uh, much more different so it's be it becomes much more violent and things like that okay so let's get started so the science of colour hopefully you're looking at this uh, this screen where you've got a whole variety of different brands and I've taken this particular uh, graphic off the internet and just embedded it into the PowerPoint because it's quite a nice and kind of simple graphic to show you about the science of colour and the meaning behind it. So similar to what I was just saying a moment ago, if you look at the colour red just there, um, you can see on the right hand side, so it's kind of like a grid system here, on the right hand side you can see how it can have all these different connotations. So it can actually be associated with conflict, heat and fire, energy, but also you've got love and strength as well and things like that. So that's about when the context changes, the colour and the meaning of those colours also changes as well. And so I'm not going to go through every single one of these uh, things uh, with you on the PowerPoint because you, know, you can do that in your own time. You'll have the Loom video and you'll also have the PowerPoint to go through. And obviously you can stop it and, and pause it and so on uh, and look at it in the, you know, at your own uh, pace. Uh, but as you have a little scroll through, you can see how if you go across but you can see how red has then been associated with very kind of iconic brands. So you've got things like Coca-Cola and ESPN and things like that. Uh, then if you look at, let's say, let's have a look on this side, uh, you've got purple. And then again, if you think about the connotations, purple is often associated with these kind of meanings. So royalty and nobility, power, ambition, wealth, mystery. Uh, things like that. So purple is often associated with being quite a, a high-end kind of colour that is uh, associated with someone who is quite wealthy. Uh, and so if you have a little look over to the right-hand side, uh, you've got brands that have used it like Hallmark, 
Um, Yahoo seems to have used it as well. The Sci-Fi Channel uses a little bit of that, that kind of colour scheme. Um, green is an interesting one as well, because if you think about green, green is often associated with uh, being uh, kind of eco-friendly and being kind to the environment. So if you look here, you've got nature, fertility, growing, the outdoors. And then again, on the right hand side, you can see a whole variety of, of images that have used that kind of color scheme. Um, so I think one of the ones which isn't on there, but I've mentioned in class before uh, to students is how Subway used kind of yellow and green, a bit similar to these, because again, it symbolizes that idea of uh, healthy eating and stuff like that. So you've got Starbucks recycling, so any kind of brand, any company that probably wants to uh, embrace the idea of being quite eco-friendly might start trying to bring in the colour green. But don't underestimate the importance and, and power that colour has uh, when putting together a brand and, uh, and a logo for a company. It's incredibly important because the connotations that they have and the and the message that that communicates to the consumer. Okay, But uh, feel free to you to linger on that slide as much as you want obviously at this point in the PowerPoint in the video you can press pause but you'll have the PowerPoint anyway uh, that you can go through as well okay so on to the next slide Bear with me, just have a click. There we go. again just a nice kind of little graphic that I quite liked uh, that I got off the internet and I've put into the PowerPoint gives you a little bit more concrete information here about um, percentages of for instance on the left hand side consumers um, so it says 84.7 percent of consumers um, cite color so basically say that color is the primary reason that they buy a particular product um, so you know again 80 you know, let's round it up 85 percent say that color is a, a massive kind of component a massive kind of thing that drives their choices uh, when they're when they're buying something um, obviously because it's very visual and uh, very engaging uh, but I like this because it kind of summarizes what I'm going to go into in a moment in the next few slides. If you look towards the bottom right, you've got primary and secondary colors. So you may have heard about primary and secondary colors uh, before in other, uh, other classes. I'm sure you have, um, you know, like in art uh, with Miss Sacadelli and Miss Streets. I'm sure that you may have touched upon the idea of primary colors and secondary colors in DT. Because obviously these kind of subjects do overlap because they're very creative and design based. Um, subjects okay so a lot of these things will kind of uh, interrelate and overlap um, but obviously if you know about those kind of things then great and if you don't then don't worry because I'm doing a bit of a PowerPoint on it anyway um, so if you, again just very quickly if you look at the top right 80% of people think that color increases the brand recognition okay so 80% of people out there think that uh, the colors that you choose uh, when putting together your brand and your logo increases your brand recognition so it is incredibly important 52 percent of shoppers did not return to a store due to overall aesthetics now again going back to what i've just said some of you might be familiar with the word aesthetics uh, and might be able to give a better definition than me but aesthetics in my mind uh, simply refers to the kind of image and the overall kind of look of something. So, you know, Mr. Scarsbrook and uh, people in DT might have talked about the aesthetics and the design of um, of something that you're creating, like from wood or from plastic or whatever. And so, basically, it's the way that something looks, the visuals. And so, what this statistic shows us is that uh, quite a, a large number of people, 52% of people. Uh, who didn't like the aesthetics, didn't like the colours, and didn't like how a brand looked, um, chose not to actually go back to that store if they think that you know it maybe it was bland and boring and so on. Um, and basically that's what you know a lot of the other statistics in this um, this kind of graphic shows. So just one more very quickly and then we'll push on. Uh, bottom left, research reveals people make a subconscious judgment. So a subconscious judgment is kind of a judgment that you make in your mind. Um, kind of like subliminally, so you make it without eating, without really thinking about it. It's kind of like almost an, an, an instinctive judgment that you make. So research reveals that people make a subconscious judgment about an environment or product within 90 seconds of initial viewing, and between 62% and 90% of that assessment is based on color alone. Okay, so that's um, that's why we're going to look at uh, color in this video and the exam board. Pearson, if you're not uh, if you're not aware of that, but you should be. Um, 
you know, the B Tech is obviously um, done by Pearson. Um, Pearson wants us, and they they say in their specification for this uh, bit of the component that students experimenting with color, looking at the science and psychology of color, is um, is really important, and, that, and that's why we're looking at it in this video. Okay, so if we push on, just move this out of the way a second. Uh, the color wheel. So we're getting on to the actual task that I would like you to have a go at doing for me uh, between now and next week. Um, so a color wheel or a color circle based on red, yellow and blue, so those are your primary colors, is traditional in the field of art. So Isaac Newton developed the first circular diagram of colors in 1666. Since then, scientists and artists have studied and designed numerous variations of this concept. Differences of opinion about the validity of one format over another continue to provoke debate. In reality, any colour circle or colour wheel which presents a logically arranged sequence of pure hues, colours, has merit. Now, uh, hue basically is the very fancy and technical word for colour. Obviously, you, know, you will know um, and be very familiar with the word colour, but hues are actually the kind of uh, more fancy and technical term for it. Okay, but as it says there, um, color wheels and color circles have been debated on for <coughs> many, many, <coughs> many years. Um, but you know, it doesn't matter uh, about the debate surrounding it. Any kind of color wheel and color chart that you create has its own validity to it. And so, basically, that's what I want you to have a little go at doing off the back of this PowerPoint, creating your own kind of color wheel. But before we get to that, there's still a few things that I'd like us to kind of cover. And what it would be good to do at this stage is with a, a notepad and pen is to make a few notes um, you know, off the back of this PowerPoint. I don't want you to simply just lift notes and copy and paste, if you like, off this PowerPoint onto just a, a note page. But it would be good to actually make some notes so um, you know, you're familiar with the, the kind of science and psychology of colors and the connotations of colors and stuff like that, because then that can actually go into your folder for when we get back to school and it can be used as evidence for your component to learning in a kind of uh, portfolio of experimental work. And if you've done some research and you've got some notes on colors to go into that file, then that'd be great. So categories of colors. I'm sure you're familiar with your primary colors red, yellow, and blue. Uh, so in traditional color theory used in paint and pigments, primary colors are the three pigment colors that cannot be mixed or formed by any combination of other colors. All other colors are derived from these three hues, so these three colors. So all other colors that you can think of, they come from these three <clears throat> kind of like base colors, if you like. you then got your secondary colors, which are green, orange, and purple. So these are the colors formed <clears throat> by mixing the primary colors. And then, something that you might not be familiar with, you've then got what are called your tertiary colors, which, just bear with me, I'm just moving this out right. Your tertiary colors, so yellow and orange, red and orange, red and purple, blue and purple, blue and green, and yellow and green. And these, these are the colors formed by mixing a primary and a secondary color together. And that's why the hue is a two word name, such as blue, green, red, violet, and yellow, orange. Um, now, for the, you know, the purpose of um, you know, this part of the, the BTEC media spec, it's not absolutely essential that you are aware of these, um, of these things, but it is still important to have a good kind of understanding of them because it's more kind of the focus of this specification that you experiment with creating your own kind of color wheels. But I still think it's important to make some notes about these things and be able to use the technical terms, primary color, secondary color, tertiary colors, when explaining um, the kind of color wheel that you're gonna create for me. Okay, so it's about trying to apply these particular media terms um, to explaining what you're gonna create. Okay, if that didn't make sense, because uh, sometimes I don't always make sense, then please just email me, get in touch, and we can have a chat about it like you know, I've been doing this whole time during lockdown. Okay, so just, just drop me an email and I'll get back to you. Um, okay, we move on to colour harmony. So we're nearly the, up to the point where you're going to need um, access to a computer, and, uh, access, sorry, to, uh, to the internet because there's a particular website which I'm going to get you to go on shortly. But just before we do that then, 
let's cover color harmony. Um, so color harmony is the pleasing arrangement of colors. In visual experiences, harmony is something that is pleasing uh, to the eye. It engages the viewer and it creates an inner sense of order, a balance in the visual experience. When something is not harmonious, it's either boring or chaotic. So basically what this is trying to tap into is the idea that when you are walking about wherever it is in a shop or if you walk past like say a billboard and you see an advertisement or you are watching TV, um, that particular advert will be very, very carefully arranged and colours are going to form a big part of that because they have to have a, a visually kind of engaging and pleasing experience on the, uh, the consumer's eye. If something is a bit of a shock to the kind of the eye, um, then that person, like we said earlier in one of the previous slides, is going to perhaps turn off and be disengaged because they don't find it very pleasing on the eye because the aesthetics aren't very pleasing. And so there is a, a clear psychology and science behind colour that you've got to be aware of. It's not um, you know, as straightforward as you might have thought it, be, it is uh, when it comes to colour. It's not. Um, people who uh, work in advertising and publishing and work in the magazine industry and newspapers uh, and create uh, adverts or create websites, the, the style of it, the colour of it, the way it looks is incredibly um, important and integral to that kind of visual experience. If it doesn't look very good, people are not going to buy your product. And then obviously people will, you know, in turn lose money and those kind of websites and those productions will have to be shut down and abandoned because people didn't think about um, the design. So advertising and, um, and things like that are, are very important, especially in the kind of digital world that we live in today where um, how something looks is, is everything. Um, if you think about uh, Facebook for a second and you think about you know, their kind of use of blue and white, two very straightforward kind of colors that have been, been used, obviously blue being your primary color, um, it's kind of a, it has kind of a clean kind of effect to it. Um, you know, it's not overly complicated. If you think about LinkedIn, which actually ironically is owned by Facebook, um, if you think about LinkedIn, they use a lot of whites in their colors. And if I remember correctly, I think in their LinkedIn kind of their font, their typography, um, I'm trying to think now if they had a, a variety of colors at one point. I can't remember now, but whatever kind of colors um, a company go for, whatever kind of font styles and typography that uh, a company have gone for as well, you've got to be asking the question of why they've done that. Okay, That's your job. As media studies students, you've got to be kind of unpicking that, looking at the connotations and trying to think about why a company has done these things. Um, okay, but if we get back into this slide, um, you know, it kind of just uh, reiterates the kind of message that I'm trying to get to you, which is that colors are very important. Uh, so I think we're up to number three. At one extreme is a visual experience that is so bland and boring that the viewer is not engaged. The human brain will reject under stimulating information. Okay, so it goes to what I was saying a moment ago. At the other extreme is a visual experience that is so overdone, so chaotic, that the viewer can't stand to look at it. The human brain rejects what it cannot organize and what it cannot understand. Okay, so there's kind of like a, a balance, a happy medium when it comes to getting the um, science of color correct for a brand and for a, a product or an advert. So the visual task requires that we present a logical structure. Color harmony delivers visual interest and a sense of order. So hopefully that has made sense to you. Okay, so possible color palette arrangement. Oh, too far up there with me. So, this one then a color scheme based on analogous colors. Basically, these are different ways that you can arrange a color palette. And so, how you create your own color palette in a moment is entirely up to you. So you can create it based on analogous colors. So analogous colors are any three colors which are side by side on a 12 part color wheel, such as yellow, green, yellow, and yellow orange, usually one of the three colors predominant. So if you have a little look onto the right hand side, you can see where the arrows are just there, how this is an analogous color wheel because you've got all the blues kind of then stretching the purples in the same kind of uh, 
um, design and layout. It then stretches into the reds, which become the oranges, which then become the yellows, which then obviously become the greens, which then become kind of the lighter greens into the blues again. So that's an analogous color wheel. Okay, quite a straightforward one. Then what you've got is one that's based on complementary colors. Uh, so complementary colors are any two colors which are directly opposite each other. Such as, so this is a little bit more tricky to do, such as red and green and red, purple, and yellow, green. So if you have a little look at the illustration just here on the right, if you look across the color wheel, so if you look at the direction of the arrows, um, the color that is directly opposite to the other one on the other side of the color wheel is the exact opposite uh, as you go around the entire wheel. So if you look at this one, you've got kind of like a you kind of an orangey or yellowish, I don't know actually, what is it, green, can't tell, greeny yellow kind of colour on this side at the top, and then if you look directly opposite, you're then kind of looking at the purple colours. Okay, and if you, if you do that on this side, you've got blue, opposite is orange. If you look here, you've got red, opposite is green. If you've got here, light green, opposite, again, it's orange. So that is what we call complementary colours um, when thinking about how to put together a colour palette. And so just going back to the definition just on the left hand side, in the illustration above, ignore the fact that it says above because I've uh, kind of moved the boxes around, in the illustration um, to the right, there are several variations of yellow green in the leaves and several uh, variations of red purple in the orchard. These opposing colors create maximum contrast and maximum stability. Okay, so two ways that you can create your color palette or your color wheel. However, having said this, the task that I'm going to get you to work on in a moment, um, from what I can see, because I've been playing around with it for a week or so, um, I can't see that it gets you to do a colour kind of wheel. The colour palette that it actually gets you to create is kind of just um, kind of in blocks as they go from left to right across a, a page, uh, which I will show you in a moment. So your task then. Um, is to create for me a colour palette wheel for a magazine genre of your choice. So <clears throat> if you look at the success criteria and the, the kind of the tasks that you have to do, I've, uh, I've said that use the coolest uh, generator website to design three to five potential palettes. Okay, so I don't want you to just send to me, you know, in like say uh, an hour's time, just one palette. I'd like you to send to me, you know, between three and five because it's not a difficult task to do. But it is an important task because this is actually specified in the specification that you've got to experiment with colors. Okay, so I do want you to do this, but don't just do one. Um, and also, I do want you to try and explain each color palette that you do and explain to me the different kinds of colors that you put into it. So what you need to do is click on Start Generator. Uh, and on the next slide, I've uh, given you a bit of a screenshot, so uh, it's a bit more kind of direction there about what it needs to look like so when you go onto this um, generator website you need to click on start generator and then change the colors on the chart to create your own uh, you need to think about the colors and shades that you go for and you need to explain them so once you've actually created and i'll say this just here on uh, the powerpoint once you've actually created the different color palettes you then need to use something like a snipping tool or print screen and then cut and paste the image of that particular color palette onto a PowerPoint, and that can obviously be kind of color palette one, color palette two, color palette three, and so on. But I do want you to try and create a little text box to the side explaining the connotations of your colors um, and, uh, and justify them. So if you've gone in one particular kind of color palette for a whole series of colors that are more associated with blues, then that's fine. But you need to explain to me why you've gone for that arrangement of colors why you've gone for blue. Obviously we know blue is a more masculine colour. If you're unsure of what to say about the colours and the psychology of the colours, go back to one of the previous slides right at the beginning where I explained to you all those different colours and we looked at how brands have used those colours because then you can get a bit of information there as to what the connotations and the deeper meanings are of the colours. Also at the bottom of this slide as you can see there it says uh, use the psychological properties of Colors website to help you. So if you click on that particular uh, web link, it will take you to a website where it will explain the different uh, properties of colors. And again, you can uh, you know, write up for me a little text box to go with your color palette explaining 
um, you know, and justifying what you've done and what colours you've gone for. Okay. Uh, again, here a bit of a stretch and challenge. Write a detailed analysis explaining how your colour palette will engage a teenage audience. Now, the thing is, um, this all kind of ties into the specification. So, like I've just said to you, please don't just create me, you know, a few colour palettes and just say, right, I'm done, because that's kind of only half a job. That's half a task. You've got to actually explain what you've done. You need to make sure that you've uh, snipped it or print screened it, put it into um, uh, your own PowerPoint, and then I need some information to go with it. Okay. Um, so just to kind of build on this website, if you just look onto the next slide for me. Oh, come on. Oh, there we go. Uh, on. So basically, when you click on the coolers uh, link, if on the previous slide it didn't work, You've got it just there again. If that doesn't work, you'll have to kind of come out of the PowerPoint that I'm going to send you, and you'll have to uh, just cut and paste that into uh, into Google, or you could just simply go onto Google and type in coolers, um, you know, color uh, websites, and you'll find it. It's not very difficult. It's not hidden on the internet somewhere, and you should then be able to go onto the first kind of um, um, thing on um, Google and go onto the the home page. And just see where I've circled it just there. Look, start the generator. So click on start generator. Uh, and what you then need to do, you'll be given like a color palette like that. So I was saying to you earlier how it's not really a, a, a circle as such. Um, it's kind of like just blocks of color. If you can change the kind of layout um, so it's more of a circle, then fantastic. But from my understanding from what I've been doing with it, it's like this. Okay, so you can see these kind of screen grabs that I've got for you just there. And then what you need to do is press the space bar and you can cycle through different color palettes. And then you can click on the individual colors. You can't really see it on that slide or that slide here. But this screen grab just here down to the bottom right, you can see how you've got a few little icons. And what you can do is if you just uh, tinker with some of these icons, you can uh, change the different shades and the tones of these individual colors. Okay, but remember what I was talking about. Um, the colors themselves, they need to be associated with something. So the previous task said, if I go back, to create a color palette or wheel for a magazine genre of your choice. Now, to be honest with you, I'm not overly precious about you doing that. If you want to have a go at creating a color palette which is based on a magazine genre, a magazine genre of your choice, that's fine. If you don't and you just want to sample three to five potential color palettes, uh, one that might be for, like, say, uh, a male consumer, one that's more for a female consumer, one for a different age group, um, and, and things like that, that's fine. As long as you can create a variety of different color palettes, I'm happy with that. And as long as you've explained them and try to explain them. So going back to this then, you can change them. Um, going back to these little icons in the bottom right. But as you can see here, these are very kind of contrasting colors. They don't really blend together at all. You've got black and you've got orange at the, uh, the kind of two ends there. And in the middle, you've got whites and kind of grays. So you know, for me, if you sent me that, that's a bit of a clash. And I would never say in a million years that they, those are the kind of colors or that's the kind of color scheme that I would find very attractive if I walked into a shop and they had that kind of plastered all over the walls, or if that was in, like, say, an advert trying to get me to buy a new kind of men's aftershave fragrance. Um, I don't find those kind of colours very appealing and aesthetically appealing either. Okay, so you need to really think about it. It's not as simple as uh, you may have thought it was going to be. Okay? Um, and then, like I've said to you before, screenshot um, or use... Uh, use a snipping tool cut and paste your different ones that you've done because I don't know if you've got to kind of save it if you can't save it and uh, you don't want to like sign up to it then just use snipping tool once you've actually created the color palette and then obviously once you cut and paste that into um, a PowerPoint slide you can then go back onto the website again and you can tinker with the calls and change it and reset it but it's not very difficult as you can see on the bottom right screen you can sign up I do believe it's free. Obviously, if it isn't, it isn't free, then do not pay for it. Okay, I'm telling you, don't subscribe, don't pay for it. Mm -hmm. Only sign up if it's free to sign up and it's free to use. 
Um, but again, with a lot of the other programs I've talked to you about before, um, if it's free, great. If it tries to get you to sign up, don't do it. But you can still just get around those things by just using snipping tool to kind of snip the things that you've done. Okay. Um, and obviously that there, the plenary, we would uh, be able to do in class, but we're not in class at the moment. So you'll just have to focus more on um, you know, doing the actual task for me and sending that to me when it's complete. So I'm going to leave you now, guys. Um, hopefully that made sense. If there's any issues whatsoever, please get in touch with me and um, I'm, I'm here to help you. Um, but I'll send the PowerPoint through to you um, in a moment. And this video should be up on the leading YouTube channel um, before the end of the week. Hopefully it might even be on today, which is Thursday. OK, I uh, hope you're all uh, keeping well, guys, and hopefully I will speak to you uh, soon. Have a nice day, guys. Bye.